Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be expanding the Synology storage pool on my 1621 Plus by adding an additional drive. So if this is something you think you're interested in seeing, stick around. Okay, so we're gonna to refer to Synology's help document to guide us along. Now, it's really not hard to add a drive to a Synology NAS, but there are things in this document that you should consider before proceeding. And that said, it's not mentioned in this document, but make sure you do take a backup of all your data. Now, the process is pretty simple, but if something should go wrong with the array, at least you have a copy to restore from. Now, looking back at this document, we're gonna work in DSM-7, but if you have DSM-6 and you plan on doing something like this, you can just click the drop down and select the steps for DSM-6.2, but we're gonna stay with DSM-7. And by the way, I'll put a link to this help document down in the video description. That said, let's get started. So to add drives to expand the storage pool capacity, drives can be added to storage pools in the following RAID configurations. Just a bunch of disks, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID F1, and Synology Hybrid RAID consisting of at least two drives. As far as drive requirements, they say make sure the health status of the newly added drive is healthy, the allocation status of the newly added drive must be initialized or not initialized, RAID or SHR configuration must be created by drives of the same type. So they're showing you the supported drives here and they're basically saying do not mix and match, stay with the same drive type. For SHR, the capacity of the drive you intend to add must be equal to or larger than the largest drive in the storage pool. So in the example that they give here, if in SHR you have a two terabyte drive, a 1.5 terabyte drive, and a one terabyte drive, they are recommending that the new drive should be at least two terabytes or larger for better capacity usage. For RAID 5, 6, or RAID F1, the capacity of the drive you intend to use must be equal to or larger than the smallest drive in the storage pool. So in the example here, they're saying if you're running a RAID 5, a RAID 6, or an F1 storage pool of three drives consisting of two terabytes, 1.5 terabyte, and one terabyte, then the capacity of the new drive must be at least one terabyte. Now that we have that out of the way, let's look at the steps to add the actual drive. It says here, power off your Synology NAS. Now, if your NAS supports hot swapping, then you can skip this step. If not, make sure you power it off before adding the new drive, then turn it back on. But in my case with the 1621 Plus, it does support hot swapping, so I'm just gonna leave the unit running and add the new drive. Once we do that, it says go to Storage Manager, and then you want to click on Add Drive. So I'll show you all that once we go through the process. Finally, to expand the volume size, once the storage pool contains capacity, contains sufficient capacity, the size of its corresponding volume can be expanded either automatically or manually, depending on the storage pool type. So for a single storage pool, a single volume storage pool, which is what we're dealing with today, it says the volume size will be expanded automatically once the storage pool capacity has been expanded, and then it refers us back up to these instructions here. So that said, Let's get started with the actual process. Okay, so we're looking at my Synology 1621 Plus and I'm in the storage manager in the overview tab and you can see the system status is healthy. Looking down at the unit itself, the Synology 1621 Plus is a six bay unit. Currently I only have three drives in there. I have three six terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drives. I'm going to be adding a fourth Seagate six terabyte Iron Wolf drive. Now that said, let's take a look at the storage pool. And you can see the storage pool is healthy. And here are the first three drives. Here are the six terabyte drives that I mentioned a few minutes ago. If we look at the hard drives themselves, you can see that drive one, drive two, and drive three have a status of normal, and that's exactly what you want. So that said, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add the fourth drive to the Synology 1621, and then we'll come back and we'll see what changes here on the screen. 
Okay, so now that the drive has been physically inserted into the 1621 Plus, you can see it shows up here with the status of not initialized. So according to the directions in the Synology help document, the next thing we have to do is go to the storage page, select the storage pool that you want to expand, click the upper right icon, which are these horizontal dots. So let's take a look at that. But before we do, let's just jump up to the overview page. I do want to show you one other thing. Before, when I showed you the Synology NAS here with only the three drives installed, now you can see that there is a fourth drive. It's outlined in green, but it's not solid green. And that's because the drive at this point is not initialized. So according to the directions, we're going to, we're going to go to the storage pool and we're going to come over here and click on these three horizontal dots and the drop down menu gives you several options. We can add the drive, which is what we're going to do, but here we can also change the raid type. If we want, replace the drive, remove the drive, and then we can go into some of the settings. But before we click on add drive here, according to the actual help document, I do want to show you one other area you can do this from as well. If you click on the hard drive tab, and you select drive number four, you can click on manage available drives as well. And you get basically the same options here, but we're just gonna go ahead and follow the steps in the help document. So let's click back on storage pool. Let's come over to the top three horizontal dots and we're gonna click on add a drive and it's gonna walk us through the wizard. So drive four is the drive that we want. So we're gonna select that and we're going to go here and we're going to click on next. Now you notice it says the estimated capacity once the expansion is done becomes 16.4 terabytes. So we're going to click on next expand volume by using unallocated capacity. The operation will expand the storage pool capacity and result in unallocated space. If you plan on using only a single volume, you can further allocate that capacity to volume one and expand it. So we're going to click on that expand the capacity of volume one. We're gonna enable that. And then we're also going to go ahead here and click on next. It's just confirming all of the settings and we're going to go ahead and say apply. When we get a warning, all of the data on the newly added drive will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? And we're going to click on okay. And you can see here, it says adding drives, initializing drive 1.75%, and it's increasing. Now, I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but when it's completed, we should get a fourth drive status of normal. Okay, so initializing the drive took less than a minute, and you can see here drive four now has a status of normal. However, if we look up at under storage pool one here, it says adding the drive and what it's doing now is the actual expansion process. And it says it has one day and seven hours left. And this is time is going to fluctuate. So, but at the end of this time period, we should have a full expanded capacity of about 16 terabytes. So that said, I do want to mention one other thing. I'm going to click on global settings. And I just want to show you that you should really set this setting here to lower the impact on overall system performance. It's the recommended setting. It's usually set by default, but just check that before you do a procedure like this. Basically, while the NAS is adding the drive, it still allows you, it, it takes longer if, with this feature enabled, but it allows you to lower the overall impact on the system so that you can continue to use the NAS. So there's a quick look at how to expand the storage pool on your Synology device by adding an additional drive. Now, as I said earlier in the video, if you plan on doing this, be sure to take a backup of your data. That said, if you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price but they do help out the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, I have links to my Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.